No success in the world can compensate for failure in the home. That's why Club Wealth was founded, to help driven, successful, and busy real estate agents like you double their business while building a strong, balanced home life. Join us each week as high-producing agents and team leaders share their stories and unpack the principles and systems they've used to double, triple, and even quadruple their business while enjoying greater quality of life. And now, here's the latest episode of Club Wealth TV. Technically, we're probably live now. We really never know. And I say that because, well, Facebook and Zoom never speak well with one another. They're uh, a little bit slow on the uptake, apparently slower even than me. And so that being said, now I'm pretty sure we're live. So ladies and gentlemen, Michael Hellickson here with Club Wealth Coaching and Consulting. And uh, I'm super excited to be here today with my co-hostess with the mostess, Miss Cherie, Atlanta wasn't big enough for me, so I had to take over Las Vegas as well. Benjamin, uh, sorry, is that is that accurate? I think that's pretty accurate. And uh, as well, I've got with me Mr. Donnie Morrow, also a Club Wealth coach, uh, also a tier four, you're a tier four coaching client or tier four coach? Tier four coaching client. Tier four coaching client, which means tier three coach. Right. Uh, and so super stoked to have you guys on with us today. And uh, so just so everybody knows, we're going to be going, uh, we're in the group. If you're, if you're, wherever you're watching us, we're going to be following the comments. Uh, I'm sorry, not in the group, but on the page. If you go to facebook.com forward slash club wealth, that's where we will be following the action on this. Uh, Tara will be sharing it to the group and all that kind of stuff. But We'll be responding live to comments on the Club Wealth page on Facebook. So that being said, uh, what we're talking about today is onboarding agents, right? Now, this is a pretty big deal. Onboarding agents is a hot topic in the industry right now. It's something that every broker and team leader seems to be struggling. And yes, Sri, I'm actually sitting down right now. I know it's weird, right? I need to get my stand-up desk standing up. It's crazy. I need to get the electric one because I got so many monitors and stuff on here. Like I try and lift it up and it gets lopsided and it wants to tip over backwards. So I have to, I, when I get my new electric one, it'll just do it up and down. But I, I, otherwise I need a second person to help me do this. And nobody helped me today. So I, on my own, everybody abandoned excuses, me. Excuses, excuses, excuses. Right? Do I sound like an agent saying, well, I just can't prospect. And here's the 3000 reasons why I can't pick up the phone and call either new potential clients or new potential recruits. And yeah, week, week, week. I get it. You and I will show him how it's done today. Absolutely. I love that. Sounds like he's had his oh, call look at that. Today. Austin just sure. ran up here. Look at this. My son is a stinking rock star. He just walked up here to help me <laughs> pull it up. And here we go. Look at that. We are now in standing position as we should be. There we go. Thank you, Austin. All right. So that being said, dude, if you can't have your kids. Honestly, that totally looked weird, I will say. I was like, what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, here's the deal. So I want to, before we get to the, too far into this, I want to make sure um, that we, and Aaron, I've just sent you the invite and Sheree, I believe I've got the invite sent to you. Oh, here it is. That way you guys will see it on your Facebook. You can jump into the chat. Um, I want to put a shout out to our sponsor, Wise Hire, which is a very appropriate sponsor, uh, especially for today's call, because we're again talking about onboarding uh, agents, whether it's to your team or to your brokerage. Uh, now, you guys, this is a major topic, and here's the problem that I have with this. So many people, and, and I'm gonna, I want to hear Aaron, Aaron, Donnie, and Sheree. I want to hear, not to be confused, by the way, with Donnie and Marie. Um, Donnie and Sheree, I want to hear it your. Rhymes. What's that? <laughs> it rhymes. It does rhyme. I know, right? Um, but anyway, that being said, I want to hear your thoughts, on, and and the reason that we've got Donnie on today is because he's very good at the onboarding process. And so I'm excited to hear what he has to say about this. And you, Shri, you've done uh, a couple of onboards here in the last couple of years, I, you know, like a uh, lot and lo tons and tons and tons of them. But here's my initial thought on this. And I want to hear what your thoughts are, you guys. My initial thought on the whole onboarding process is that people tend to make it way too complicated uh, and they expect it to be perfect before they start recruiting. What do you guys have to say about that? Yeah, they do. And then they get wrapped up in the training aspect, which is definitely important. But the biggest thing is implementation because it costs you such an investment as a team leader in more than anything time in the beginning if you're still doing your own training like I am. Um, and if you don't get them implementing right away, you could find yourself two or three months in the hole before you even start to try to get any kind of return back from that agent. So it can be 
really difficult. And then take that and imagine trying to onboard three or four at one time. And all of a sudden you're quadrupling that investment and not even having a chance to get anything back for 60 or 90 days. If you're not doing it properly, it could be very devastating to the bottom line. So Donnie, okay. Um, I've had the pleasure of coaching Donnie, but (laughs) so let's go back a little bit and let's talk about some of the mistakes that you made earlier on when it came down to onboarding your agent. So probably when you first came, you know, what were you doing as far as onboarding? Yeah, so I owe most of this to Cherie, actually, in Club Wealth. Um, So this may be boring for her. She's definitely heard it before and probably does it better. Um, But what I had done in the past was I really just didn't have a plan, to be honest with you. I was kind of winging it, um, and I hired people. I think I was smart enough to hire. I didn't call it hiring for fit, culture, fit, and personality, which is definitely what I hire for now, and that's a huge mistake if you don't hire for that, number one. And I didn't call it that, but I think I was from past business experiences. I did pretty well hire for that because I knew if I couldn't get along with them, it wasn't going to work just from past experience. Um, But more than that, just no plan whatsoever. It's kind of like hire them, give them some leads, give them advice every day when they had questions and hope that they showed up. So no plan, no standards, meaning don't you know, they they didn't necessarily have to make a number of calls or I had the wrong standards. After I had no standards, I came up and I said, man, I need some standards. So my standard was you got to call every lead 10 times if you can't reach them, which isn't bad compared to what a lot of agents do. However, when you have a thousand leads in your system, you have four or five agents, how do you track whether or not they're calling all those leads 10 times? You can't, it's a complete nightmare. So one of the first things Cherie had me do was change our standards so that when we onboarded, we had the right standards of what they had to call and just put together a plan so that when they come on, I do it the same way every time. It's a way that works. I can show them the examples of other agents that are working on the team. So I have proof that it works. Um, And that just works a whole lot better than trying to wing it or just do it on your own. What happens is a lot of agents, they don't realize that what they're doing is they are bringing people on and throwing them in the deep end and it's like sink or swim, you know, Mm -hmm. and and we think that's not what we're doing. We think that, Hey, I'm giving you a great opportunity. You know, I'm giving you leads and I'm here if you have questions, but I'm not quite training you. I'm not quite um, holding your feet to the fire, giving you some accountability. There's a lot of things that are just missing that's there um, from what, we've all been guilty of making the mistake, you know, we've all done it. And so the only way that we get better is to learn, which is why I'm so grateful that you're on today, because it's some things that I think that it doesn't matter what level you are um, when it comes down to um, a team. If you have someone on there and if it's you plus an admin, then guess what, baby, you're a team. Um, So that's right. You're on, you can always learn how to perfect this process even better. So one of the things that I, I think we're talking about here, and I think what it really comes down to is there's there's a disconnect between where should I be, where should I be on the spectrum, right? It's either bring them on board, throw them at, you know, throw them some leads, throw them some systems, some support and tools and let them sink or swim. And then there's on the other spectrum, it's super heavy training, you know, big old training regimen over the next 90 days. And they're going to spend all this time in class and learning, learning, and learning, and learning. And then there's somewhere in the middle. And what I'm really hearing you guys say is, it's somewhere in the middle, right? It's it's not enough to just have them on the daily huddle. You've got to have them on your daily huddle and be providing them with some additional training on top of that as a new member of the team. That being said, this does not need to be one-on-one, true or false, because one of the problems I think a lot of agents have, and I say agents, I mean team leaders and brokers have, is I think that they feel like, well, I've either got to have this big class all the time and I got to have a whole bunch of people there or I got to do everything one-on-one. And they forget that, look, if I'm doing one to three, one to five, that's great, right? Because it's one to many. I'm training these guys. They get a chance to interact with me. They get a chance to learn from, you know, how I want things done and how I believe they're going to be the most successful. Um, And it's not taking, if I'm doing one to three, I'm three times more effective as if I'm doing it one to one. What do you think? Michael, I think that there's a there's a little bit of a piece there. So, you know, okay. when we first initially think about it, we think about it in a selfish manner, right? So we think mm-hmm. about, hey, I get to utilize my time the best that I can. I've got three mm-hmm. people. I'm teaching all three people at the same time. 
And one of the things that I think that we miss is that those three, when I'm looking at them, I get to, I have the unique pleasure of starting to see what each one's superpower is Mm -hmm. because I've already determined that yes, you're a culture fit. Now I got to figure out exactly what your superpower is. And then they form a small group. You know, I call them the class of, you know, so the class of July, (laughs) they form a, a group within themselves that they are now helping each other. So if one missed something, the other one caught it, they get to help each other with it. Much like whenever we go to any kind of class room setting that we sit in, same thing. Well, and so that you you just nailed it, right? Because there's synergy that happens when you do it one to many that you don't get one to one, and certainly not. And and I hear people say this a lot. Well, why can't I just record videos and just have them watch the videos, and that's it? Well, answer that for me. Why why can't we just do that, guys? So one of the best relationship and culture building tasks you can do with a new agent is that one on one time building that report them building that relationship with them. You're teaching them how to make the money in the business. I've got a fairly new agent on my team that literally did a video and said, I didn't know anything was like this was available in Memphis at all. So what kind of relationship am I building with him when it's myself and him or myself and him and two others? And I'm teaching him how to make money. He's had a real estate license for two years, but worked another job because he didn't know how he would get off the ground and how he would get going. And then he comes over my team and quits his other job. What kind of relationship am I building with that client or with that agent versus showing him some videos? Yeah, I like how you spoke a little bit and said that client. And then you caught yourself and you said that agent. But the reality is they're your client. They, right. they are. I'm always telling the assistants, hey, we work for the agents. We're here to take care of our agents. That's right. That's right. And I think a lot of people forget that. I love the brokers that say, you know, oh, well, you know, or the team leaders. And sometimes it's more the team leaders and the brokers, but they they both at times uh, in both groups act as if or you hear from people within both groups that this person works for me. So they've got to do it my way. No, 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 no. You don't understand. There's a disconnect there. You got to understand they're your client, right? And if there's certain ways that we want things done, then we've got to sell the value to them on why it's more important to do it that way than their way. We can't just say, well, because I demand it, you have to do it this way. That's counterproductive. All right. So let's get into, oh, go ahead, Shree. Yeah. I was just thinking that, you know, I'm, when it comes down to our admin staff, you know, I, I look at each piece that I bring on, I'm looking at hiring for whatever our weakness is. You know, so is there a title for it? Someone who does listings? Yes, there's a title for it. Someone who does contract to close? Yes, there's a title for it. But that person has to really fit culture-wise, and then they have to fit what that weakness is that we have right now when it comes down to the team. So the way that I look at it is, is that although, yes, I might be the person who's signing the, you know, doing the payroll, but this person who's on there is filling a void that we have on our team and they're helping us grow. So they are so much more, you know, actually, I mean, the admin staff is probably one of the biggest pieces to the team because there's a lot of stuff that just does not get done because as agents are out squirrel, 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 every time we turn around. Um, So to me, while my admin staff understands that, you know, for our agents and for everyone, it's Disney World when you show up to this sucker every day. Like it's Disney World, period. It's the happiest place on earth because we spend the most amount of time with each other, not with our families. Um, But we have to, so the, the team leader or the agent whatever level it is that you're at that that treats their staff as if you work for me, you do what I say, you're going down the wrong path. You get so much more out of someone when they feel as if they are a part of this and they're helping to grow it. You get so much more out of them. So let me ask you this, because I, I want to I want to shift gears to the, the topic of, OK, what do I do when an agent comes on board? You know, I've gone through my process, right? So I've, you know, either I've found an existing agent or I've gone out and I've, I've put out wise hire ads, which attract a lot of the newer agents. Sometimes we get some experienced ones there as well, but new or experienced, there's really two sides to the onboarding process, right? There, what, what were you saying, Shree? It's the news. <laughs> right, exactly, right? And I love them both, right? There's reasons why both make sense on your team. And I think that's another that's another big dilemma that the industry has is should I hire experienced agents? Should I hire new agents? 
And for me, I feel like there's a place for both. Honestly, I feel like I'm most productive long term with my when I bring a new agent on board, but I'm more productive short term with the experienced agents. Um, so that the problem with the new or the experienced agents is you've got to untrain a bunch of bad habits. You know, a lot of times they come with some ego. A lot of times they're not as willing to kind of be molded into a system that we know works uh, because they feel like they've already got all the answers. Um, where and that's not always the case, but it's often the case. And then with the new agents, right? You bring a new agent on and they're eager to learn. They just, they want to make money in this industry. They have no clue what they should be doing. And so they're much more receptive to, you should do this, 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 and this. And when they do that, when we can actually start them off right, get them engaged, get them into a process that we know works, all of a sudden they can have success and they can have success quickly. And that's really important for a new agent. So that being said, there's we're going to talk about what is that process? What does the first 90 days look like when you bring an agent on your team? But in the very beginning of this, I want to be very clear about there's two processes to onboarding. There's the administrative onboarding process, and there's the sales training side of the onboarding process. So we've got to logistically bring them into our brokerage, our team. we got to get contracts signed, all that kind of stuff. Then we have to get them trained and, ta- and taught how to go out and make money hey, get them in the habit of doing the things that are going to make them money. So start with the administrative process. We'll talk about that for just a second. Then we'll get to how do we help them make a living and, and, and be successful at this. Sure. Now you're hundred percent right. There is two processes. We basically have a checklist for both. It's super simple. It's straight down a lot. It's not anything fancy that takes a lot of time. So we have a training checklist. We have an onboarding check checklist. 90% of the onboarding checklist is actually done by the assistant. I don't do it. We use monday.com so that we can mark it when it's done. We can send each other notes. I can let her know, hey, we're ready to do this. She can say, hey, I've got this done so that we can communicate. But she pretty much does all of that. About the only part of the onboarding process I actually do is the team agreement because I want to go over the team agreement pretty much line by line with them So that I know their expectations, I can see how they react to it, if they're comfortable with it, if there's something in there that they don't like, or by the same token, if there's something that I see that I don't like. That's one of the first things and a first clue, so to speak, possibly as to how good of a real cultural fit they are uh, once they get to that process. So 90% of the onboarding is done by Courtney, and she's amazing. She's been with me three and a half years, so she takes care of a lot of that for me. So if you're that to me, that's not the dollar producing activity, just like we always teach our client, our coaching clients and our agents on the team, you want to focus your time on dollar producing activity. Well, filling out paperwork, letting the brokerage know they're on board, getting the headshot set up, ordering business cards, all that stuff is not really dollar producing activities for me. That's stuff that I can easily have her take care of. That being said, I don't want to move on from this just yet. What I want you to tell us, how long does the administrative side of the onboarding take? Uh, And then one of the things that I want to key in on is after you get done talking to us about that and any more thoughts you have on on the administrative side, and Sheree, I want to hear your thoughts as well. Then I want to talk about, before we move on to the sales side, I want to talk about what is the single most important thing that you can do during the administrative onboarding process? And, And so, Donnie, go ahead. So it probably only takes us a couple days, to be honest with you, to get 90% of the administrative side done. There may be a little bit of delay in getting business cards back once they're ordered, um, depending on when the photographer can get to them to do the headshot. That's usually a day or two. But truthfully, if in a week, we'll have 90 or 95% of it done. There's a couple things that are stragglers, possibly because we don't give them, for instance, new leads when they first come on the team, we have them call from the pond, there may be something on that list that, you know, maybe a tech connect, connecting them to some of the online portals, that kind of stuff that may wait for three weeks or what have you until they start getting closer to the time frame. But of course, that's a great thing about using a program that where you can keep up with what's done and what's not done is you can set a reminder for yourself to do it three weeks out or whenever the case may be and see where you are on that. Okay. Sure. Um, Talking about my difference. I want to know about how long, first of all, how long is it taking you to do the administrative process of onboarding? And then we're going to go into what is the most important aspect of the administrative process? For us, our administrative process happens, you know, there's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes. So for it's, it starts off a little bit earlier. Um, Once we know that someone is joining the team, we do ours in a little bit of a reverse fashion. Uh, We like to go over the team agreement first before we start putting you in the stuff. 
just to make sure we're all in the lines and we're all in agreement first. Um, and then once that's done, then we start with the administrative process. We've got to onboard on in our office and we've got to onboard with corporate, you know, how it is. Like you, same thing with Donnie. You've got to onboard here and you got to onboard with Remax as a whole. Um, so that process, once someone gets in front of us, it is a two hour long process because everything has happened behind the scenes. We've made it so that we have cutoff dates. So on Wednesday, you're starting on Monday if you make it by Wednesday. So what that's done is that it's allowed our admin staff to start working on everything behind the scenes so that once the agent gets started on Monday, then we can start really pressing go. So it's it's a little bit different, but it's all the same. Yeah, that makes a big difference. All right. So then what I'm hearing is too, in in that part of the big the big reason for that is because now it's a, it's a much more seamless transition for the agent. The last thing the agent wants to be doing is sit there in some administrative team member's office going through oodles and oodles of paperwork because we all know how agents love paperwork, right? So now they get to sit there screwing around with all this paperwork and, and it just becomes really onerous and it doesn't feel good. The experience for the agent sucks, right? We want to make sure, you were, you were talking about earlier about Disney and about it being the happiest place on earth and your team is like Disney, it's the happiest place on earth. Well, here's something that you guys need to remember, and I'm saying this to everybody watching this right now. We need to make sure that the agent experience, the onboarding experience for the agent is a world-class experience. It needs to be a, a Disney-style customer experience, right? So they need to come in. It needs to be smooth. It needs to be quick. It needs to be easy. It needs to be fun, and it needs to be happy, right? So I would say the, the, the couple of things, number one, during that process, it's extremely important that you mix in some fun. You mix in some happy stuff during that process. I heard about headshots being taken. That's great, right? Make them feel like a rock star. Get other agents in the office to come by. When they see them onboarding, get them to come by and give them a high five. Welcome to the team, right? Make them feel excited about being a part of this team or this brokerage. Then as we accomplish that, as we create that Disney style customer experience, now what we need to do, the single most important part of that administrative onboarding process is I've got to go in, I've got to get a video testimonial toward the end of that process. And this has to happen within, no matter what, in the first two weeks, ideally in the first couple of days, I want to get a video from that agent as a testimonial to why they moved to this office and how great and smooth and fast the onboarding process was and how they're already excited and having success. Then I need to get that video retargeted to the office they just came from. I need to put a geofence around that freaking office. I'm going to run that ad to those guys over and over and over and over again so that every freaking agent in that office knows this guy just left that office and came over to our office and he's super happy here. This gal's already come over here and had success here. Whatever. Like, I want them to see this. Any, any thoughts on that, you guys? Yeah, you're exactly right. The, actually, the first two things I thought of was their experience and social proof. So we're on the same page. Yep. Um, you know, I think Long might have said it at uh, LABC that the first two to three weeks after they leave another office is when other agents are talking to them like, hey, how's it going? How's it, you know, what's going on? Did you make the right move? And that's when they need to be confident that, yes, I made the right move. Things are going great. I'm getting great training, whatever the case is. Um, and then you look for clues, kind of like when you're with a home buyer or seller, you'll hear things like, man, I really appreciate the one-on-one, -on -one, or I really appreciate the fact that you're voting your time to come and train us. So when you start hearing those clues, it's kind of like when a home buyer starts placing their furniture in the home, you know you're on the right track because they're made, they start making comments um, that they're noticing it as well. And, and then you know that you're having a great experience and that's a great time to get that social proof from them is when they're just first starting to see the light that, yeah, there really is something different here. Yeah, Daryl, Leo, Thomas, I guess, is this Leo? That's Leo. It's that's that's Leo, Leo, right? <laughs> Freaking Leo's like, what's up, Leo? Did we finally get hit? Dude, you better be listing some houses now, brother. That's all I got to say. So, but Leo has made a good point. He says, yeah, make it feel exclusive, not like a cattle call, right? As they come into the team, make it feel like something special that they're there. You know, and, and that also goes to the onboarding process, right? If you're pandering for them to come to your team or to your brokerage, guess what? It ain't going to feel very special, right? Yeah, and I think, so here's the thing. So Leo is um, a team member on our team, and um, he's part of our leadership um, team. 
that's there. And his office that he sits in is right next to our recruiter and trainer's office. And so he makes it a point. What he's saying is, you know, make it feel exclusive. He makes it a point too. whenever there's someone that's new that's coming on because of how we are on our team and we're much more like a family on the team. He makes it a point to go meet the person, talk to them, like come into my office, even though he has a sticker on his door that says no girls allowed. You might have to do that. <laughs> that's funny. But here's the thing. But Leo and, and we'll, uh, Leo, I'm going to pick on you. I'm going to use you as an example because I know you can handle it, brother. But here's the thing. I want to make sure that Leo is developing relationships with those people that are coming out of the office as well. It's important that everybody in that office or on that team understand the value of those relationships and why it's important for them to build those relationships with a new agent, right? Build that relationship, help that person not only feel like a full and complete part of the team so that they're productive, but as you establish yourself as a leader on the team, which we all should be doing, right? At, at some level, we need to be going out there and really leading by example. And as we do this now, this person now feels more comfortable coming to us. They feel more comfortable sharing with us. And here's the truth. Will everybody make it on our team or in our brokerage? No, they will not. In fact, 87% of the people won't even make it in this industry. So what happens to those 87% of the people? And, and not only that, as importantly, what happens to all of their referral clients that they would have? What happens with all those people that they're friends and family of theirs that are thinking about buying or selling a house? Who are they going to refer those to? Let me tell you something. When you're the guy that was nice to them the day they came onto the brokerage or the day they came onto the team, when you're the one that went out of your way to befriend them, when others were so busy doing their own thing, they didn't give them a second thought. When you're the one that went out of your way to help them be successful, even though for whatever reason they weren't, guess who they end up referring their people to? You. So here's a great way for you to either help a new teammate, which there's lots of benefits there as well, even if they do, if they assuming they do make it right, because now they cover for you when you're gone. And they, you know, when, if it's somebody that doesn't quite fit their personality type, they maybe they refer that to you. There's a lot of benefits that come along with this. But even if they don't make it, they could be a huge benefit for you. So you've got to go out of your way to make those relationships. It's so important. Uh, and by the way, those of you that have questions for us, type them into your Facebook feed now. We want to get to your questions. That's important that you type them in and we'll do the best we can to get to each and every one of them. All right. That being said, uh, I think we've pretty well covered the administrative onboarding process. So let's talk about the sales process. One of my big concerns here is especially those people that feel like they've got to have this. I talked to a client this morning that, you know, they were talking about, oh, I've got to build out this really robust onboarding process so that I can make sure that, you know, I've got videos and all this training so that when people come onto my team or into my brokerage, they're not lost. They know exactly what to do. And my, my first concern is, bro, I got news for you. Most of them, if it's video based, they ain't going to watch the video. It isn't going to happen. <laughs> they're not watching it, right? They're going to say they did, but they're going to be watching freaking, you know, Golden Girls and clicking the button to make sure that it looks I don't looks know about like Golden Girls, but they're going to be watching something <laughs> no, else. Not Golden Girls? Is that nice? Not, not paying nice. attention. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't work. And it's funny because I've talked to a lot of people who think that, you know, because we're in such a technology wave right now and we get a lot of information online. I mean, look at what we're doing, you know, currently. And they think that, if I just put it all in the video, put it all into one place, then the agents can just go there instead of coming to me, instead of learning from each other, they can just go there for it. And that just flat out doesn't work. Now, is it a great source to send them to if you've already covered something um, so that they can, hey, go back and watch this? I think that Jesse Zagorski does this really well. So he will record his trainings and a lot of his meetings that he has. And so whenever an agent brings something up again, he can send them back, you know, to that on whatever day that was for them to listen to first and see if they get their answer that way. But you can't do that initially. You can't take away the human process of this. <laughs> that's just, you know, it's, it's like the agents who complain that there's Amazon that's coming, that there's all of these other tech you know, I buyers getting into our space and you're trying to do that on your team. That's exactly what you're doing. Yeah. You're just, a lot of these agents are just jealous that they didn't think of it first. Right. And so, but here's hey, the I'm jealous I didn't think of it first. I know, right? <laughs> but, but here's the, here's the reality too. You know, I mean, you think about this video should not be a replacement for us doing the training that we need to do. It should not, it's just like, 
you know, people want to make text messaging a replacement or drip campaigns a replacement for one-on-one -on -one contact voice-to-voice -voice and face-to-face. -face. I got news for you guys. That is not what's working out there. And here's the reality. Does, do, do text messages work for nurturing and follow? -up? Yes, absolutely. They're very powerful for that. But do text messages work for selling houses? By and large, the answer is no, right? You got to get voice to voice. You got to get face to face. And we need to do the same thing with our agents. Those relationships matter. We need to build rapport. We need to deepen the relationship. And then we can take that relationship to the next level. They're more successful. And in turn, because they're more successful, we are more successful. Uh, yeah, I relate it to if you bought almost any technology in the last couple of years, a CRM or anything, seems like every one of these companies got 4 million 20 minute videos for you to watch. So I related to my agents the same the way I feel. I'm not watching those videos. You know what? If I'm paying you $1,000 a month or whatever it is, if you can't answer a two-minute question without me having to watch a 30-minute video to try to find my two minutes out of it, then you don't want my business very bad. So if I can't send you an email or call you to get a question that I need without watching a 30-minute video, I'm not interested in your product. And it's the same thing. I understand why they do it, but I hate it for onboard, especially if you've got a team of 17 people <laughs> and you're trying to answer all those questions that way, it's a complete nightmare. And I'm kind of like, you know what, if I'm paying you a thousand dollars a month, why can't you give me good service? And it's the same thing with the agents. I'm actually in the process of making my videos now for my training classes. I actually don't even have them made yet for that reason. I want it to be a reference for them after the fact, but yeah. it doesn't replace giving them to class. How does day one, what's day one of your training? So I've done my, onboarding process. I've been there with Courtney. You know, there's some things that are working in the background. We understand that. So now that I'm getting started with my training, what does that look like? So day one is absolutely learning the CRM, how to use the CRM. That That's what it is. Depending on the agent and how well they seem to pick the CRM up, we may start on scripts that day because the first two days are CRM and scripts because those are the two things they really need to get on the phone and start taking action because on day three, we want them on the phone taking action. Ah, listen to you. But a lot of people, oh, I won't let an agent touch the phones until they've been with me for at least two weeks and been through all this training and blah, 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 blah. Dude, what do you guys have to say to that? Because I hear that a lot. Yeah, no, it... it, it <laughs> Well, remember I talked at the beginning about your investment of time, first of all. There could be times when you could even have an agent come in and guess what? Day three, they're not picking up the phone. Day four, they're not picking up the phone. Well, you can head that off very quickly and either find out that they're not a fit and possibly save yourself the time of even having to train somebody that's not going to work out anyway. Um, or you find out very quickly, hey, this person is a rock star. They're knocking out 200 calls a day because they have nothing else to do. They actually listen to what I said when I explained to them that, hey, you're brand new. You don't have any clients to go show houses to. Why not make 250 calls a day? Why not treat it like a business from the beginning and truly put your time in? Don't just spend an hour on it and pretend like you took massive action because you didn't. So it tells you a lot right away whether or not they're going to be any kind of culture fit at all. Dude, yeah, this one, let's face okay. it, everybody brings their representative with them to the interview. That's what happens. You know, their representative comes. They're, they're so gung-ho. They love this opportunity. They can't wait. Like, all of this stuff comes. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It's such a great opportunity. Oh, thank you. I've been looking for this all my life. Um, and then when it's time to get in the mud, they don't want to touch it. That's right. Know? So that's what happens. Um, so we do the same similar thing. It's, it's you come on. You get on, we get onboarding going. We give you homework from that to where you have to start learning, you know, part of the script. You have to, you do watch some videos on the CRM uh, <laughs> aspect of it. And then the next day you're coming in and we're getting started with a little bit more of the CRM, but we start you on training. You know, I also think that this is a this is very much our fault as leaders, right? Somebody comes on the on on board, we need to make sure that they understand to Donnie's point that look, you're unemployed right now, right? Think about this. I always tell people that have no job and they're like, oh, I I, I need to find a job. Okay, great. What are you doing to find a job? Well, I put a couple of applications in yesterday. I checked the paper, or I checked indeed or whatever, blah, 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 blah. But you know, I I've I've and, and how many applications have you submitted? Oh, a couple. Are you freaking kidding me? If you are unemployed right now, whether you're in real estate or not, any industry, you're if you're unemployed, you need to treat finding a job like a full-time job, right? 
That's part of the problem. That's one of the things I hate about our employment system. I'm not going to get all political on y'all. But dude, if you're not treating it like a full-time job to go out and find a job, you don't deserve unemployment. You don't deserve freaking any of that money because you need to do your freaking part to go out and find work. If I'm a real estate agent, I come on to your team or into your brokerage, you as the broker need to be, and or team leader, you need to be teaching me, hey, look, you're unemployed right now. You need to get rock and rolling because how you treat me that first week to two weeks and what systems and habits I get into that first week to two weeks, that's going to dictate my future with that team or that company. If I come in and I get used to, oh, I don't have to be here every day. Oh, I can roll in at 10 o'clock or noon or whatever. Hey, guess what? That's going to become my habit. That's going to become my new normal. If I want to be more successful than it was at the last place I was at, I have to have a new normal. That new normal has to include I'm showing up at the office at the same time every day. I'm aggressively going after it every day and I'm not screwing around. And that's our job as team leaders to not only, you know, to show here's what that looks like, but to enforce the account, the accountability that, hey, look, we're going to inspect what we inspect, excuse me, we're going to inspect what we expect on a daily basis. You're going to do A, B, C, X, Y, and Z, and we're going to help make sure you do that because we want you to be successful. Now, that being said, My, oh, go ahead. Okay, Michael, I think that um, one of the key things when I, I said that they bring their representative to the interview one of the key things that, that we've done is dived in a little bit deeper when it comes down to that interview process. So we talk a lot about accountability. We talk about leadership. We talk about what their goals are. We talk about whether or not our environment is the best environment in order for them to get there as to what they're looking at. We, you know, as far as your business and your personal, you know, because to us, we do this business to create a great personal life. It's not, we just do this business just to keep on working and keep growing. Um, but we hone in a lot on what we do a lot of, and that is accountability mm -hmm. and whether or not you are a person who works well with accountability, or if you don't work well with accountability, what type of leadership style do you work well with? What type of leadership style don't you work well with? We do a lot of those questions in an interview and we make sure that they understand that what we have right now and what the process that you will go on, go through in your first 90 days is for us to help you become productive, but we can't force you to be productive. Yes. So Sheree, what I'm hearing you say is the in, the onboarding process really starts at the interview. It right? starts it's, the interview. It yeah. starts the interview. Because okay. we're not just looking for a culture fit, you know, so we can try to- Although that's out. important. Yeah, it is, you know, it's huge. It's yeah. very huge, but we're not solely looking for a culture fit. We're trying to see whether or not I can stop having the person that gets broken within the first five days. Okay. So I need to back up and we're going to go into more of exactly what happens. We've only got about 15 minutes left. So we got to do this rapid fire, but we're going to talk more about what happens those first couple of weeks. Uh, real quick uh, question from coach Jeff Moore, great club wealth coach. Jeff Moore asks, uh, how do you handle transitioning an agent that has deals or leads from another brokerage? This is a big deal, right? Because this can really impact someone's propensity, especially an experienced agent who's doing a little bit of business. It, it, it impacts the ease of transition for them and whether or not, and a lot of times, whether or not they'll make the move at all. So how do you guys handle that? So if they work for it at another brokerage and I had no involvement, um, I don't take any money off of that. I, it's not my job to try to make their money off of work they previously done. I look at that the same as if I change brokers and I've got five listings, the broker wants to keep his listings. Well, he didn't pay for any of my advertising. He didn't make any phone calls. He didn't go on those appointments at night when my family was eating dinner. Why should I have to leave my listings? I know technically they belong to him, but the point is he really invested very little, if anything. What if their them. broker says, we're going to screw this guy and we're going to cut him down to half or not pay him on these things when he moves? How do, how do you handle that transition? How do, you, how do you get them over to your broker, to your team without them losing money on those transactions? Because it happens. Some of those brokers are out there are kind of vindictive about that stuff. I've been fortunate enough. I haven't had it happen yet. Um, so I haven't really had to think about it a whole lot. I think I'd have to look at that situation and think about it a little bit before I really give an answer on that. Um, we, we have been fortunate. And I would say most brokers in our area have a reputation for, for being good, possibly just off the top of my head. Um, you could offer the broker a referral or something like that. I have heard of some brokers saying, Hey, yeah, you can take everything with you, but you know, give us some kind of referral or something like that. But I think that's probably going to be a case by case basis, depending on home price and several other factors. So I don't have a plan in place for that right at the moment. 
Yeah, I mean, we've had it to where we've had to get the uh, board involved because we have brokers who are being a little nasty on the exit part of there, um, or they don't want to release their license or whatever that, you know, might be. So that's what we've had to do in that case. But it's the same way. If they're bringing it over with them, then we let them finish it out. Um, We try to, I think that for me, I really try to have a conversation with that broker in order to make sure I understand where they're coming from. Because a lot of times, you know, they might be moving from something that's small. Now, if they're moving from a big box brand, normally we don't have any issues like that. But it's when they're moving from a smaller brokerage. And when that happens, I try to have a conversation with them, get them on the phone, not just via email and send over something um, for me to understand what their position is. You know, and, and a lot of times things get solved with that. If we come into a sticky situation of that manner, you don't have to start fighting with fire and and all of that. Most of the time you can handle it that way. But to answer Jeff's question, when someone that comes over and they have business that that they're in the middle of, then they can finish that business off. It's the same thing. One thing that I've also seen some agents do or some brokers and team leaders do in situations like that, if they've got somebody that says, you know, hey, if I move, my broker's screwing me out of these commissions, I'm going to lose, you know, $5,000 or whatever, then great. All right, come on over here on your first, you know, we'll do 100% on your first couple of transactions, whatever it takes to get to that $5,000 back for you out of our side. Great. Come on over and we'll, we'll take care of that. That way you're not losing a thing. Um, you know what? And to the brokers who do that, just think about how far, what your reputation is like when that yep. happens, you know, when you do things like that. And to the agents that leave and take things with them, think about how that oh, reputation yeah. follows you. And if you don't think that all of us talk, believe you me, we all talk. Um, and, yeah. agents, we all talk about brokers and it, it all happens, you know, especially you're, look at it, Memphis, you're all talking about the same stuff, <laughs> the same people, you know, so. Well, and then you you got to ask yourself, am I leaving a trail of dead bodies behind me everywhere I go? I mean, that's you can't be doing that because, man, this is a small industry. I don't care. I mean, it doesn't matter where you are. It is a very small industry. So good stuff. All right. We had one other question uh, that I wanted to get to as well before I forget. And then we're going to continue on. We've got 12 minutes left and we're going to talk about that first two weeks. So uh, Mel Parsons asked, and hi, Mel, wonderful Club Wolf coaching client. We all love Mel. Uh, when do you introduce the new team member to the rest of the team? This is a big one. It is. So I bring them in typically at the very next meeting. Whenever they start onboarding, I introduce them. I want to get them into culture, meeting the agents. And and we talked about this earlier, um, and I really didn't put a whole lot in, but I do all my training out in the open. I have a small brokerage. We have a huge um, entryway for you or whatever you want to call it with TVs and stuff like that on the wall. But we only have four small offices, and there's typically people in those uh, fortunately, with it being a smaller brokerage, most of the people coming through are either on our team or on my broker's team because they're the only two teams there. That's the whole brokerage. Um, so it works out really great doing it out in the open because they're meeting people who come in. The broker may come in. His wife may come in. People on his team come in. People on our team come in. So as I'm training them, I do it all in where they know there's no secrets. It's not like I'm training them differently than I'm training anyone else or anything else. I'm telling them something somebody else hasn't heard, number one. And then number two, they get introduced to a lot of people that are already feeling comfortable within the brokerage. And then I bring them in to the very next meeting. Once I start onboarding, unless I see an issue that for some reason would make me hold off, which is very rare, um, I'm going to bring them in and introduce them to the whole team at the next meeting so they start feeling like they're part of the team. So our introduction happens at the, um, with the, on the admin side of it. So the admin, we have a separate group, you know, so most of the time they've seen a couple of key pieces already just from them being on their interview, them being in and out of the office, just that initial um, side of it. But then there, we do onboardings on Monday, we do our team meetings on Monday. So they, they actually get introduced to the team at that time because heck, we're all in a meeting, you're here too. Um, but we, But if onboarding happens prior to the meeting, then they get introduced to the team in the in the group where everyone welcomes them um, to our team. So that's how it does. That's how it gets done, Mel. Okay. All right. So let's move forward to, uh, we're going to talk about these first two weeks that someone's on your team. And what I want to start with is what happens the first two days they're on your team. We talked about the administrative side, but on the sales education side, what happens in the, or the, or the onboarding side and for, in terms of how we're going to get them into transactions? Actually, I have two questions. First of all, how quickly do they go from new member of my team to first transaction under contract? 
And then how do we get them there in that first couple of days? And then we'll move into the two weeks. Definitely. So our goal is to have everybody under contract in the first 30 days. Um, and the way that happens, as we mentioned earlier, is number one, sync training or whatever CRM you use, they've got to know how to use it. That's the lifeline. That's where the leads are. That's where they've got to set reminders, which is the lifeblood of their business to start building that pipeline. Uh, and then number two, script training. Uh, I really call it more of a template than a script on the buy side. You give them examples. Um, we do have a script, but like I said, it's almost more like a template because the buyer calls can all be so different. It's not quite the same as like an expired script or a physical script would be. Um, and then we role play that script. So typically I do that in two days. Sometimes I can get it done in one, but I've learned somewhere between an hour and two hours, their eyes are glazing over. I, I can hardly ever go past two hours. That's just too much for them and me, to be honest with you, a day. Um, a lot of times I'll try to do an hour on day one on CRM, an hour on day, day two on scripting and role play. And then on day three, I'm with them on the phone. They know how to use the CRM. They should be semi-comfortable on the phone. They're going to be a little nervous if they're not used to it, sure. But they know how to keep track of the people they talk to. They know how to take notes. They know how to set reminders. They know how to find their leads. Um, and then number two, they know pretty much they've got a general idea of what to say. We've already practiced it. So they've already practiced it with me, um, which is good. Obviously, if you're doing group onboarding, group training, they get to practice with one another as well. So it's not just one person. So they can hear that different personalities may say things in different ways, which is really good. Uh, on day three, I want to be able to see them on the phone. I want them to pick up the phone and start taking action. If they don't start taking action pretty quickly, they have to get real lucky to be able to get the first contract in 30 days because we don't start them off with brand new leads. So it's not like they're getting leads that are coming in saying, hey, I want to go see 123 Main Street. They're calling old leads, which oftentimes are great leads, but they may take a little bit of nurturing because they may say, well, yeah, I inquired about a house six months ago. I'm not quite ready, but I will be in two months from now. So they've got to know how to handle the differences and start building that pipeline. Okay. And by the way, before I forget, uh, everybody, I just if you would just check out in your uh, chat boxes there, uh, I actually are in, in the comments in the thread here. I posted a link to Business Strategy Mastermind Conference. Before we get to Cherise, what she does in her first two weeks, uh, I want you guys to think about this. You need to come and meet Donnie and, and Cherie. <laughs> I almost said Donnie and Marie again. You need to come meet <laughs> Donnie and I'm in Vegas Cherie. now. <laughs> I love it, right? I know, right? So... <laughs> Uh, that we need to get you. Doesn't she have a big hairdo or something? I don't know. Anyway, we need to get you guys uh, out to Business Strategy Mastermind Conference to meet these guys and to really go deep on their onboarding processes. Uh, so check out that link. Go to clubwealth.com forward slash BSM. That's clubwealth.com forward slash BSM. I will promise you this. It is a game changer. The people you'll meet, the classes you're going to go to, the education you're going to receive, the networking, the masterminding, it's phenomenal. And you're going to have a lot of fun. So get signed up for that uh, while the ticket prices are still affordable. They're going to be going up soon. That said, Coach Sheree, talk to us about your first two weeks. Somebody's on your team. What happens? Um, so we have onboarding. Uh, you get homework from that, which is part of that is for you to start to internalize a, a script. Um, and then on the day two, because of course, day one is your administrative part on day two, you are starting on the phone too. So we do, we've got 30, I think 38,000 leads is the last time mm -hmm. I looked that's in there. It's a ridiculous amount of leads that we have. Um, and Leo, who was uh, just on there, he's a part of our, um, I do, we do, you do team. Um, that's there. So they get to listen in. So I think that one of the mistakes that we made early on was that we started them off, we gave them the script, we did a little bit of role play, and then we said, bam, go, you know, directly to the phones. So what we've changed it to is that we have them, we come, they have, they get their role play going, but they don't immediately go to the phone, they're listening. So they're listening to our strongest callers that are there on the I do part, you know? And then after that, because now, and I'll tell you the, the beauty of this team is that no one's getting anything extra besides the fact that we're all growing together. They then will sit and take turns with doing the we do. Listening to them, they're both sitting there and they're making calls together. This is all happening in the same day, but I want them to listen to. So from eight to 10, they're listening to someone who is like a phone animal on the phone, making mm -hmm. the calls so they on speaker so they can hear both sides of the conversation. 
So they're starting off with some of the I do, they do a little bit of the we do. Um, and then that's how it continues. It continues that way until we get them to the point that we're comfortable with just the you do. Yeah, that's huge. So what's your yeah. goal? So, so the, in, what the, is... in the interim of that, so that's with our scripts, but then we have okay. something different that they're learning each day. So what we've done is we've taken it through the process of what it's like. So what happens? I make the phone call. I get an appointment set. Great. Now I have to do a buyer's consultation. I got to learn that. You know, then I have to do how to show a house, which a lot of people don't teach. We teach how do you show a dang on house? Um, so they've got to learn that. They've got to learn open houses. They've got to learn contracts. You know, so there's there are something that's every day with the exception of Friday. Friday is the one day of the week. So we stretch this out over three weeks, but there's something between 11 and 12 that they're sitting down classroom style learning. What about you, Donnie? We do it very similar, actually. I need to add the uh, we do. I love that. Um, that's very good to add, add it actually on the phone call. I think that does a couple of things. I almost always hear from new agents is, man, I talked to so many people that have already bought one come the agents are letting them slip through the cracks, which is awesome because they see that there's opportunity right away and they see that you have to follow the system and follow up with those people. Uh, number two, by doing the we do, they're also going to hear that, hey, even this rock star doesn't hit a home run on every phone call. So many agents focus on when they didn't get a yes. I don't care about when you didn't get a yes. I care about when you do get a yes. Um, so I think those are awesome. We do the same thing. It takes two to three weeks. Uh, it's usually three days a week for one to two hours. And we do some of the same classes, agent etiquette, believe it or not, that we have to have yep. classes to tell agents to turn folks lights off and lock their houses up, which is yep. tells, yeah, it's terrible, but we have to do it. Um, and that's, that's like the class that every agent like, oh, I don't need that. Yes, you do. Um, Another <laughs> one is perfect day schedule. They don't think they need that. Yes, you do. Absolutely. <laughs> agent etiquette, how to show a house, how to set appointments. Uh, from We have a class that I just added recently from client, what did I call it? From lead to client. Because for that exact reason, because people would say, okay, I set an appointment, now what do I do? And I was like, oh, I was missing that in my training. So I had to go back and add a class to walk them through, hey, okay, so now you've got an appointment, they're a good lead, how do we get them to be a client now? What are their steps in between? So we've had to adjust and add a couple classes like that as we go, but that just goes back to, hey, just take action and you can fix some of the stuff along the way. Yeah, I think really what it comes down to, and by the way, we're out of time. We got, we're going to have to wrap this up. But I think really what it comes down to is we need to have a very si simple system that we follow consistently every single time. We yep. will dial that system in. It starts with a checklist, right? And it really that checklist is as simple as just write down what are the things that I think an agent needs to learn when they start with our team or with our brokerage or in the business just write those things down. Just make a list and break it into categories as you're going along. But just make a list. Start with that. And then as what you do is you just sit down with them and just do your training live, right? Just start talking about it. And as you do that, you will come up with more things. They will come up with more questions and you will dial your process in. If you'll do that and keep it super simple, guess what? You'll have way better training than most people out there do. And people will engage with that training, which is what's necessary for them to have success with the training or as a result of the training. Um, all right. Uh, last question. And then we've got to seriously wrap up. Corey Smallman asks, and welcome Corey Smallman, one of our other Club Wealth members here. Thank you for being on. Uh, if you're letting them pr uh, practice on pond calls, how long before you start sending them new leads? So I usually go for a thousand calls. I want to make a thousand calls typically comes in within two to three weeks. Um, but it depends on how they're doing it. If they're out writing offers on pond leads, because some agents do, we may bump that up if they're ready. So I, a little bit, it goes by them. So I tell them two to four weeks. And in my mind, that's the plan. You're going to call from the pond for two to four weeks, depending on how you do. The rock stars can be quicker. The people who take a little longer, obviously, are closer to the four. Uh, also depends on if they're a brand new agent or if they're experienced. If they're an experienced agent, they tend to do better. Like you said earlier, they have early success versus long term. For me, it's once you go under contract. Once you write a contract. Once you go under contract, not right. <laughs> once you go under contract or in escrow or binding, whatever your state calls. Gotcha. It. Okay. Yeah. So once that happens, so once you because what tends to happen is it's it ends up being about the same process there with the time frame that it takes for someone to get under contract, it ends up being about the same process. Now getting to consistent contracts is different, but for them to at least go under contract the first time, 
um, that's when that's when it it uh, shifts. I love it. I love it tons. All right. So that being said, you guys, we've got a great download for you for free. Uh, Donnie, what is in the download? What are people going to find when they go to clubwealth.com forward slash Donnie Morrow? And I am putting this in the text right so, now. <laughs> yes, yeah, actually, my training checklist is super simple. It's not going to be earth shattering, but it definitely gives you an idea of the classes you need to have in mind to be teaching. And those are enough classes for them to be successful. You may add or take away. But that is plenty and more than probably they really need. Um, you'd be surprised. So many brokers or what have you want to sell everybody on, oh, we're going to have all these training and people sit in class for six weeks and walk out the door with their eyes glazed over and forget 95% of it. This is enough to get them going and give them a good base, but it's not so much that it overwhelms them or distracts them or holds them up from taking action. Dude, I love it. We are officially out of time. We've got to wrap it up. Don, Coach Donnie and Coach Marie. Marie. I love it. Dude, I'm calling you Marie for a while. I'm just kidding. I promise I won't do that. I, I value my life. That said, I really appreciate you guys coming in and sharing this video with us today. Great call. Seriously, great call. I have a feeling this is going to become one of our most downloaded calls. Uh, so that being said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you again, you guys. If you haven't done so already, check out Wise Hire for all your recruiting needs. Uh, they do a fantastic job of bringing us great applicants, especially new agents. Uh, and then also to get signed up for BSM and go get Donnie's free hiring uh, and onboarding checklist, his, his system that he uses for that at clubwealth.com forward slash Donnie Morrow. Have a great day, everybody. And remember, you are world class. Bye. Bye.